guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here to do my first official video for the Irish Readathon 2021. So this should be the first video going up on my channel in March during the Irish Readathon and I'm so excited to get into more kind of recommendations and chatty videos with you about all books Irish and yeah, I can't wait. As I said before in all of my videos, it's my favourite time of year and I love doing these videos. So for this video, I was kind of inspired by Sarah at Voyage Th Through Words because she did a video a while ago about books that um, kind of made her cry and it made me start thinking about some of the books that have made me emotional or make me cry and I decided to do a segment for this readathon about Irish books that I have read that have made me feel emotional for a variety of different reasons. So that is what I'm going to do and I'm going to go straight on to my first book which is a book I read very recently and is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. This is a book that is set in ancient Ireland and we are following a girl called Sorka who has six brothers and when her father remarries um, this woman who is actually a wicked sorceress, she ends up putting a curse on Sorka and all of her brothers and the brothers are turned into swans. And Sorka is basically ends up having to do this vow of silence and she has to go on this really horrific kind of quest um, that's very painful and very traumatic for her to try and get her brothers back and bring them back into their human form. And she only has a certain amount of time that she can do this before she basically loses her brothers um, to their animal nature um, as swans. So this book is a chunker, it is about 600-700 pages and this was just an absolute wild ride. I absolutely love this book. I ate it up um, and I just love books like that that you just want to devour in like one go because you are just so invested in the story, you just love the character so much and that was definitely this book for me. Um, I felt very connected to Sork as a character. She is only about, she's very young when we first start following her. And then when like the main part of the story follow starts, um, she is about 14 or 15, I think. There are some really horrific things that happen to her in this book. There is a sexual assault that happens in this book that's very, very hard to read about. And then Sorka's trauma and anxiety and like PTSD from that um, ends up being like following her throughout the novel as she has to deal with like just the effects of that attack, both physically and mentally. And it's definitely a very hard like they're all very hard scenes to read and um, when that scene was happening I was genuinely really upset and I had like tears in my eyes and I was trying not to cry when I was reading that scene and um, there's also some animal death in this book that also made me quite upset so yeah this is a book that kind of had me on a whole range of emotions from like love to fear to sadness to grief and um, so yeah it definitely made me feel all the emotions. The next book I want to talk about is Wildflower Girl by Marita Conlon McKenna. This is a book that I've talked about before when I've kind of talked about um, just both Irish, Irish historical books I've loved, children's books um, that I've really liked and I did talk about it in my school days tag that I put up a couple of weeks ago um, so I don't want to go on to it too much here but this book basically follows a character who when she's a teenager gets on one of the ships from I think from Dublin but then maybe she goes to Liverpool and then onwards to the United States um, and around this time this is um, a few years after the Great Famine and Ireland like is still like we never really recovered from that but around that time there was so little left in Ireland in terms of like food and um, jobs like there was just so little left there was also like the English occupation at the time there was rents that were being raised by landlords and people just could not cope and there was mass emigration to both the UK and the United States around this time and we are following a character who decides that it's the only thing she can do is to emigrate to the States and the thing is like about around then like once you decided that you were probably never going to come home you're leaving your family forever so we see her deal with that the grief of saying goodbye to her family of knowing that she'll never see them again that she's going on to a completely new life completely alone in this huge new country that like she's completely alone and it is just so sad to like read that and then when she's on the ship itself i think they were called coffin ships and basically they were like the people who were like in the third class who were like down below were treated so badly there was rampant sickness and plague um in these like bottom tiers of the ship and that like uh, people who were like trying to travel to a new life ended up dying on the journey because things got so bad the people were like starving people were sick you know as we've said a lot of people were coming from Ireland from the famine who they had their bodies hadn't really recovered yet from that starvation so then they were very susceptible to sickness on this journey and there were general times when um, this character was going on this journey on the ship and the fear and just the trauma she experiences during this made me really really emotional because I, I 
was just thinking about all the people who really did take this journey and um, people who could be ancestors of mine um, that I don't know about and yeah it just made me really emotional just thinking about it and it's one that I kind of think about a lot and um, it's it's that those scenes are ones that I just will think about a lot when I think about books that make me emotional and books that really touched me um, in different ways and yeah that's definitely one of them. Another book that I really loved and made me feel all sorts of things was The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This is a book I read um, just before Christmas uh, last year and I raved about it in like both my like wrap up and my vlog when I was reading that and this is set in 1918 Dublin. We are following um, a nurse who is working on a maternity ward in Dublin uh, during the a great flu epidemic so she is dealing with pregnant women who have contracted this flu so obviously their lives and the lives of their unborn children are under great strain because of this flu plus just the fact that again they're probably poor women who don't have the best kind of nutrition and like their bodies are kind of already both just in terms of like food and nutrition but also sometimes from the fact that they are like constantly bearing children and their, their bodies are starting to break down and the flu is just making everything worse. So we are following this character called Julia as she strives to like help these women and like make the sure these women survive and we are following her over a course of only a couple of days on this ward and it's very intense and um, it's very gripping it's so immersive and I just felt everything for these women I never wanted Julia to basically leave the hospital I didn't want her shift to end because I wanted her to stay with these women all the time and I definitely I definitely felt all sorts of emotion when I was reading this book from like you know sadness for the characters for fear and um, anxiety like it was just all over the place and I absolutely loved every moment of it. There are also some really really heartbreaking moments in this um, as well like including um, just again like traumatic pregnancies and um, infant loss and just like death of a loved one and um, so yeah there's a lot of really traumatic things that happen in this that do pull a lot on your heartstrings. The Last Days of Rabbit Hayes by Anna McPartland is a book that I have talked about a few times um, in other videos where I've recommended Irish reads and to be honest this is one that I have read a good few years ago and I don't remember everything about this book there are some parts of it that are a little bit fuzzy but I do remember the overall feelings that this book gave me which were you know quite like moments of sadness but also moments of love and joy and just that feeling when you're like surrounded by family and your family will do anything for you because this book we are following a character called Rabbit who unfortunately has been diagnosed with a terminal illness and we are kind of following her in her last few kind of months as her family like kind of band together to look after her and her young daughter and we are following like that journey but then we we're also kind of flashing back um to rabbit growing up and um, the people that she loved the both like the men that she loved the friends that she had and kind of just like a wrap-up of her life and what it means to be her but this book definitely the main focus of this book is just the love what people can have for their family and how people get together and how people can like look after each other and it is really really beautiful but it's also a really heartbreaking book Asking For It by Louise O'Neill is one of those books that I remember having a really physical reaction to when I was reading it. Obviously this book, um, if you haven't heard about it already, this book follows a character called Emma who one day when she goes to a party she is drugged and she is gang raped by um, a bunch of like really popular um, like sports people um, or guys who are on the sports team in her village and these are guys that like would be quite liked and um, they'd be well known and she has a little bit of a reputation as being a little bit of a mean girl and we basically this book is basically about how people don't seem to believe her when she comes out of like what happened to her even though there are like pictures and images of like what happened and people basically blame her for like being raped and there's a lot of victim blaming in this book and it is very very hard to read and all the things that Emma goes through and how people treat her even how her like like family treat her like her mom and dad almost kind of want her like just to put it behind them in a way they almost blame her sometimes in a and like it's just yeah there are so many parts in this book that are just so hard to read but at the same time the story itself is so important this book was actually made into a play um a few years ago and I actually think um Paul Meskel who was in Normal People played um either her brother or I think the brother of the main character of the victim um in the play and it's one that I just 
I just couldn't bring myself to get tickets to because I wasn't sure how I would feel seeing it on stage because when I was reading this book I had to put it down a couple of times and just like pace the room because I was getting so riled up um, about this book like just the anger the sadness I had for Emma the anger at people around her and um, the unfairness of it all really affected me and it's an amazing book but it's again a really hard book to read. The next book I want to talk about is kind of weird because I'm kind of talking about the film at the same time and this is Brooklyn by Colin Tobin. This is a book that again is around emigration but this time from the 1950s we are following Ailish who emigrates to New York um, and leaves her mother and sister behind in her small, I think it's Galway or Wexford. I think it might actually be Wexford that she um, grew up in and she leaves her family behind and while the book is really really good and there are definitely emotional parts of this book because there is some like scenes of grief and losing people that you love in this book there's something about the movie though um the movie makes me cry every time and i don't know whether it's just saoirse ronan because I, I love saoirse ronan and she's just such an amazing actress but i just love this like even thinking about this movie kind of like makes me want to tear up because there's something about this movie that like and the book that make me feel homesick even though I'm home if you know what I mean like it makes me love Ireland and miss Ireland even though I'm in Ireland and this book just like and the movie <laughs> portrays just so much about that and what it's like to leave the people you love and then to like be torn between two places and try and figure out where your heart really belongs and how hard it is sometimes to do that and yeah I just love them both and to be honest I think it's one of those weird ones where I actually love the movie more but I still really really love the both of them and they always make me very emotional. What I want to talk about is Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan. This is a YA book um, that kind of has some like witchy like urban fantasy um, bits in it and we are following a, a char two characters, twin girls whose names are Maddie and Caitlin and their mother has remarried so they move to this new village where they don't really know anyone and straight away, um, who is it? Caitlin. Caitlin is a twin, she's always been like the confident twin, she is the twin that kind of gets out and about and Maddie is the quieter one. And Caitlin immediately falls like in with this older guy who obviously like from the start is up to no good where Maddie is just kind of trying to figure herself out um, and she ends up kind of like starting a relationship with another girl in the town and she starts to figure out around like like kind of the secrets of the town as well as some secrets within her as she finds out that she has the ability to be a witch while at the same time she's trying to like help her sister who seems to be getting deeper and deeper into this bad relationship and I don't want to say basically what happens near the end of this but something really horrific happens and it actually kind of shocked me some of the things that happen in this. It gets like fairly like like ex not explicit but like it gets very violent and it's just very upsetting because even though this is like done in a way that there's like the fantasy element to it um it's still very similar to like what a lot of girls would go through um when they end up in bad relationships and how they can just be lied to and manipulated and you know they think either they can fix someone or the wall is pulled over their eyes until the last minute when like you know things go really badly for them um through no fault of their own and yeah there's just some bits in this book that like made me sad made me angry and yeah shocked me and yeah i really, really loved this book and um, but there's definitely moments in it that really shocked me last book i want to talk about is the woman at 72 dairy lane by carmel harrington this is a book that i read last year during the irish readathon um, and it was actually a gift from kirsty over kirsty's reviews because she had read this book and she really really loved it and she had to send it to me and i'm so glad she did because i read it then and i also really really loved it this is a book, um, a contemporary book, around two women who live on this um, road called Dairy Lane in Dublin. And we are following one woman who is in a very terrible, abusive marriage. And then we are also following her older next door neighbour who can hear everything that's going on like through the walls for, of the house because their houses are attached. They're like semi-detached houses so they're like connected to each other. And she can always hear what's going on and she doesn't know what, what she can do to basically help this other woman. And she herself is also dealing with a really like severe form of anxiety and um, the fear of going outside. So she's kind of trapped in her own house. And 
she's kind of seen by the other couple as being like this narky like basically cow who sometimes calls the police on them and you know is you know up to no good and she just yeah she, like she's nosy and all this kind of stuff where actually she's quite well-meaning and basically the two women end up forming this really really lovely friendship and you end up finding more about both of their backstories both of which are equally sad and equally like just really really emotional while you know you're kind of really like trying to like you're really urging them on to be able to tackle their current situations and this book definitely just gripped me I couldn't put it down I felt so emotionally attached to the characters and their stories um and yeah it's definitely just the type of story that is just I don't think anyone could read this and not feel at least a little bit emotional about what happened especially as it does actually deal with something that happened um in real life and affected a lot of people and a lot of families and yeah it's still even though it's, it was quite a while ago now it's still sometimes so unimaginable to think about and to read about to, be, to th think that it actually really happened um obviously i can't say what it is because it would be a spoiler but yeah it's one that i still think about a lot and i would actually love to reread it now that i'm thinking about it um, but i think i have it at home in my um mom and dad's house um which i haven't been to in three months so those are all the books that have made me feel all sorts of emotions. I would love to know if any of you guys have read these books and also felt the same way or if you guys can think of any books that like made you feel super emotional and maybe books that like really just struck you um, when you didn't expect it. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys again next time.